I recently began using a new electrical component when interfacing microcontrollers to help with mini-driven systems. So consider this. This is a rotary shaft encoder, and it will spin infinitely in either direction. And in this example, I have it increasing or decreasing the value of a number based upon how many times it's spun. Um, and I want to talk about a little bit how we interface these with a microcontroller and also discuss how we can do more complicated things, like if I do a push turn, you can see it... Uh, it says pushing to the right, pushing to the left, or I can just spin it one way or the other. Um, this is the inside of the box. I have a character LCD here. And this is the rotary shaft encoder. And these are pretty neat because you can do a lot of menu type functionality with a single component. And this is what they look like. It's a pretty small device and uh, it turns infinitely in either direction. And it also has a push button action to act as a switch. Uh, when you push it, these two pins here are closed, so these two pins make the switch. And as far as detecting right and left, it actually changes the connectivity of these three pins depending on which way you spin it. And it's actually not as easy as you'd expect. If I were to hook up a voltmeter to some of these pins and spin it, you would hear beeps because there are very brief momentary contacts between these, but in the resting state, they're open, they're not at all connected. And the way you, you can use a microcontroller to determine the direction it's spinning is to look at the timing of the connectivity with one pin and another. Uh, so in this configuration, consider there are three pins. What I would do in my circuit is uh, there's one pin, there's another pin, and there's another pin. We would connect the center one to ground. And then with the internal pull-up resistor in a microcontroller, give this a positive voltage which can be described as this, but in reality it's just going straight out of the microcontroller into your rotary shaft encoder, which represents this. Now as you spin it um, in one direction or the other, it will momentarily ground this point or ground this point, and the microcontroller can determine that. So again, this would represent two pins of your microcontroller. The microcontroller I'm using is ATmega48, and I have the reference diagram here. Uh, in my code, I'm connecting it to PD2 and PD4, which is pins 4 and 6, and it represents the uh, PCINT 18 and 20. These are interrupts which will break the code and run a certain function when there's a state change on those two pins. And again, these resistors that I've drawn in here are handled in software. They're actually built into the microchip, so it requires no external components. I can wire these two pins directly to the microcontroller and do everything else in software. And I'm not going to talk about the details of that, but I will talk about how I handle the menu functionality pretty simply. Um, I represent R1 and R2 like this. So this represents the two pins. And if I were to look at this uh, in a time axis, if I spin it one way, there is a pulse on R1 and R2, but the R2 is a little bit time shifted to the right. And if I spin it the other way, R2 is a little bit time shifted to the left. And the easiest way to handle it in software is consider these different time points. So you have some type of hardware based interrupt that every time a level change is, is detected, it determines the state. Uh, consider this is off and on, so this would represent sort of 0 and 1. Uh, if I make this 0 and this 1, and if I make this 0 and then this 2, I can go through and add all of the cases. So here, 0 plus 0 will be 0. Uh, here, I have 2 plus 0, which is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Uh, 2 plus... Actually, 0 plus 1 is 1. And then we end up with 0. So this would be the code if I move it to the right. Uh, if I turn it to the left, we have the same thing. If this represents 0 and this is 1, this is 0 and this is 2, we would have... 0, 1, 3, 2, 0. So if I keep track of the state of these two pins over time, I can, after five digits are acquired, I can look at the last five digits and say, well, if it matches this pattern, it was turned to the left. If it matches this pattern, it was turned to the right. And actually, in my code, I do another step. Uh, I add 4 to everything to determine whether or not the button's pushed. So I have an extra pin here that represents the button. I, if the button is pushed, I'll just say B equals, so it's 4 plus everything. So 4, 6, 7, 5, 4. This would be the code if I push and turn to the right. 
If I push and turn to the left, it's four, five, seven, six, four. That's push and turn to the left. And that's exactly what I've implemented here. If you look at the characters on the top left, um, you know, there's, there's one more thing I should mention. In reality, uh, it's the inverse of this, because this shows a high level. Uh, but since in this configuration it will be momentarily grounded, it actually looks like this. Right, where there's one of them, and there's the other one. So it's essentially the inverse of this, but you get the idea. So this would be uh, 7, 5, 0, and you can figure out the rest. Um, and the top left numbers here show the sequence. So the last five numbers are the last five that occurred. And I have it set up in software. This is the C that runs on the microcontroller. And where do I do that? Okay, so here I've, I've defined what it should look like if it spins to the left. So there's our seven. What it's like uh, if it spins to the right. What it's like if it's pushed right, pushed left, etc. And every time there's a match, it will do the appropriate action to the variable. And I'll show, show you. So we'll go back here. 76457, that's the code for turning left. If I turn it the other way, 7546, that's to the right. And really all that happens is that these two numbers switch, the 5 and the 6. So there's left, and there's right. I can do the same thing with a push and hold. So push and hold to the right, push and hold to the left, uh, and it can do different things to the, to the value of the variable. I also added my click functionality, so when I push it, it says clicking, and when I release, it says clicked. And I told it when I push it to make the value zero, and when I release to make it one, two, three. Um, so this is a very easy way to do entire menu-driven interfaces with nothing but a single component. And these are really cheap, uh, just kind of looking around eBay. Um, Ten for five dollars with free shipping. So these are about fifty cents a piece. So I don't know if you're like me, but I hate drive drilling a lot of holes for menu buttons. Um, but I'm really starting to like these rotary shaft encoders. So I'm going to post all the code on my website. Uh, if you end up using it, send me an email. I'd like to see what you came up with.